So, each time you solve an equation, I don't care what kind of equation it is, okay, you've got an expression on one side separated by an expression on the other side separated by an equal sign. That's what makes it an equation. The same four steps are true for any level of equation you ever encounter. Okay, the first thing you need to do is simplify each side as far as you can first. So you treat the left-hand side as its own separate thing. And you simplify that. Combine like terms, distribute. The stuff that we just did on 1.2 day 2, all that stuff that we were doing in there, combining like terms, distributing, adding, subtracting, using order of operations, all that, you treat the left-hand side like it's its own problem. And you work it down as far as you can. Then you do the same thing to the right-hand side. You simplify it down using order of operations, simplifying whatever as far as you can before you try to start moving things across the equal sign. That step will save you a lot of heartache later on if you trust me, okay? Now, once you've done that, you're going to have to make a decision. You're going to get all the variables on one of the sides. It doesn't matter which side. It's up to you. Sometimes all the variables will already be on one side. So that decision has been made for you. Sometimes you'll have variables on both sides of the equation. So you have to decide, do you want to get the variables all on the left, or do you want to get them all on the right? In general, you like to get them on the left. However, sometimes by always moving them to the left, you introduce negative numbers that you otherwise wouldn't have to. So there are times where I would advise you to move to the right. Ultimately, though, if your decision is I'm always moving the variables to the left-hand side, that's going to work out fine. You're going to be able to solve all your equations that way. But you have some flexibility in that. Okay. So once we've de decided which side we're going to move all the variables on, we have to move all the plain orders to the other side. And those are called constants. That's that word. Constant is just a plain number. It doesn't ever change. A variable changes. That's why it's called a variable. It varies. X can, in one problem, equal 4, and in another problem, equal 7. It can change. But 4 can't ever be anything other than 4. It stays the value of 4 all the time, forever and ever. That's why it's called a constant. It is constant. So you've moved the variables, so you've simplified the left side, you've simplified the right side, you decided you wanted to move all the variables to one side, therefore the numbers have to go to the other side of the variable. And then you just have to solve, and then you, all right, solve for the variable. And that's it. You've done, sol you've solved equations a bazillion times already. But if you needed a little refresher on the steps, there you go. Should you feel like at any time when you're taking notes that I'm moving a little too fast, you have two options. One, throw your hand up and just tell me to hold on, okay? Or two, you can just skip some space, and you can go back later. There's going to be a video for this lesson attached to the assignment, just like the other ones were. You, hopefully, you saw those videos there, especially uh, those of you who were gone at all. All the instruction is there. The same thing will be true with this, okay? So if I go too fast for you and you've missed four, solve for the variable, obviously you can talk to your friends and get notes that way too. But know that the instruction is all going to be in a video attached to your assignment later on today. Okay? So let's look at some examples. Right. Here's example, three examples. Okay. I, you can try to solve them if you wish. I'll give you a couple minutes to try to solve them yourself. But we're going to go through them together. I think you'll be okay with A. B and C are a little trickier. But go ahead and go ahead and take a couple minutes to try to solve those. Okay. And if you get stuck at all, that's okay. We're gonna go through them together anyway. That's a good question. So all those four steps that we talked about, look, there's only one variable that's already on the left. So we've already decided all the variables are on the left. Is there anything I can do with 4D? Anything more I can do with it? 
well, just with 4D. We're, we're pretending that this side doesn't even exist right now. 4D by itself. I can't, there's nothing I can do. It's just 4D. I can't add it to something. I can't, there's not like terms I have to combine over here. So the left side's already simplified. I look at the right hand side, it's literally just one number. So steps one and two are already done, or step one is already done. The simplify, the left hand side is simplified, the right hand side is simplified as far as it can go. Then the next couple steps are done for me too. The variables are, are, are already on the left hand side. The constants are already on the right hand side. So this problem, they've already been separated for us. So now it's just a matter of getting D by itself. And the strategy that you use when you go through solving equations, if you were going to tell someone a general strategy that you use, what would you tell them? Do the what? Opposite. opposite. You're always going to do the opposite. All right? So what do I do to solve this? Um, divide, uh, divide both sides by? Four. four. Because 4D, what does 4D actually mean? This means four times D. So the opposite of multiplication is division. Okay? So then 4 divided by 4 is 1, but we don't need to write the 1, because 1D is the same as D. D. 36 divided by 4? 9. If I wanted to check this to see if it was right, I would take 9 and substitute it in for D and say, hey, does 4 times 9 equal 36? And you'd be like, yeah, it does. Dunzo. How many had that one? Okay, simple enough. B's a little trickier, right? We got negatives. We got fractions. Um, can I do anything on the left-hand side by itself right now? Negative T over 8. Can I do anything more with that? Can I combine T and 8 somehow? No. Okay, and the right side is negative 7, so there's nothing I can do there. The variables are already on the left. The constants are already on the right. What's got to go? Because I need T by itself. What's got to go over here? Negative. The negative and the 8. What is the fraction bar? What mathematical operation does that fraction bar actually mean? Division. So what's the opposite of division? Multiplication. Multiplication. So what do I have to do here? Multiply by? Negative 8. Negative 8. Okay. And again, if you think about your fractions... Negative 8, negative 8, that cancels out. T over 1 is just T. Negative 7 times negative 8. 56. Okay. So remember that when you're dealing with fractions like that, you can think of it as division. Now here's where it gets a little trickier, okay? Because 3 fifths. And if you notice here, in each one of these problems, eventually I want it to be 1D or 1T. I need this to be 1X. I need to somehow change that 3 fifths into a 1. And earlier we learned about a property that if you multiply by something, it will turn into 1. Peyton, what was it? Do you remember? Isn't that when you reverse it? Yeah. Flip it. Flip it, which is the reciprocal. reciprocal. And so if I multiply by the reciprocal... Do you remember the property? What property says multiply by the reciprocal and you get 1? Eric? Multiplicative inverse. Multiplicative inverse. Very good. I don't have room to squeeze that in, so I'm just going to write it again. Okay? So multiplicative inverse, that just gives me x. Now i got to do 8 times 5 thirds, right? So that's like 8 over 1. Multiply across the top. Multiply across the bottom. Negative 40 over 3 done. We don't need to go any further than that. Okay? So when you have a fraction in front of a variable and you're trying to turn it into a 1, remember the multiplicative inverse property. Just multiply by the reciprocal and it will turn into a 1. Because if I, if I think about that, right, this is 15 over 15x. 15, 15 over 15 is just 1. Okay, any questions on any of those three? we got a couple more to look at. Okay, next. Two more. These, these get a little more complicated now. We've got three more problems to look at. Now they get a little more complicated, right? 
Try to solve those two. Let's see what you end up with. So on this first problem, can I do anything on this left-hand side? Can I combine 8Q minus 15? They're not like terms. It doesn't have a Q on it. 49 is just itself. So the first step's done. Second step is get the variables all on one side. Well, how many variables are in this problem? They're already over on the left. So step three says put the constants to the right. So which constant is not on the right yet? Negative 15. So how do I move it? Add it. Okay, and here's where the additive inverse comes in, because what's negative 15 plus 15? See, every time you draw this line, we draw the line, they cancel out because it combines to give me zero. And so the left-hand side is only 8Q. We could write 8Q plus zero. We don't need to, because plus zero is you didn't do anything. All right? And what does this equal? 64. Okay. Now I've now so I've gotten all the constants to the right, all the variables to the left. What do I need to do to get Q by itself? Okay. So what does Q equal? Now notice something, and I saw a couple of you that did this. Some of you were taught to draw the line through the equal sign like that. How many are taught to do that? You can do that. You're welcome to keep doing that. It, it really separates the left-hand side from the right-hand side. And any time you kind of move across that line, you do the opposite. So that minus 15, in order to get to the other side, I had to do the opposite. In order to get that 8 gone, I had to move it to the other side. I had to do the opposite. It was multiplication. Then I turned it into division. How many had that correct? All right, good. All right, B's a little trickier, right? Why is B trickier? Because what? Right, I've got variables on both sides and constants on both sides. Right, I still can't combine. I can't 12y minus 8, I can't do anything with. Or, sorry, 12y plus 8, I can't do anything with that. They're not like terms. I still can't do anything 6y minus 5. Can't combine those. So the first step is still done for us, combining all like terms. The second step, now you have to decide which side you want the variables on. So which side do you want the variables on? left, which means 12y stays put. The variable that's on the right needs to move to the left. How does it move to the left? Subtract. Subtract. And again, what is 6y minus 6y? Zero. Zero. It goes away. Right? If I do it to one side, I got to do it to the other. So this is just, all this is doing is getting all the variables to the left. Right? What is 12y minus 6y? 6y. Okay, the plus 8 is still there. 6y minus 6y is 0. I don't need it anymore. Don't lose the minus sign on the 5. It stays with the 5. Okay? So you've made a decision. Said variables are going to go on the left. Constants now need to go where? To the right. To the right. Which means what has to move? So how do I make it move? Subtract 8. Subtract 8. Okay, 6 y that's 0. I don't need to write it. Okay, if you like your line, go for it. So this ends up being a dilemma for some of you too. You're like, all right, am I subtracting? Is it negative? Is it negative or subtracting? Am I adding them because it's negative and all the rules and I don't remember all the rules? And is it si Here's the rule. Okay, it's simple. Don't make it confusing. The signs are the same. You add them and keep the sign. If the signs are different, you subtract. Keep the sign off the bigger number, quote unquote. In this case, are the signs the same or different? Same. Same. So I add them. So what do I get? Negative, Negative 13. Keep the sign. Then I got to get y by itself, divide by 6, and we're done. How many had both of those right? Good. Now, you could have converted that into a decimal because the problem didn't have either decimals or fractions to begin with. So if you would have converted this to negative 2.17 repeating, that would have been fine. But to be honest, in order to do that, you'd have to go reach for a calculator, which the rest of this you wouldn't have needed a calculator. So you would have had to take an extra step to reach for your calculator to convert to a decimal, I'm guessing. And I'm giving you permission not to do that. Okay? Yes? In a minute. Last one. Give that one a shot. So
So this problem I need to simplify first the left hand side, right? It needs something. It needs a little work. What do you do? Distribute. That three in front of the parentheses means you have to use distributive property because you can't do anything on the inside. X minus 5 is X minus 5. So I'm going to distribute this first. Okay. That will give me 3X minus 15 equals 13. 13 is good on, on its own. And at this point now it's easy, right? The X's are already by itself. I got to move the 15. 15. How do I do that? Add it. Add it. Okay. So I've got 3x equals 28. Then what? Divide x equals 28 thirds. If you want to convert it, you can. You don't have to. Okay? How many had it? Me. Good job.